Thanks for being here. Thanks to FAST for the opportunity and for trusting me again. My name is Maximiliano Contieri. I'm a teacher here at, at University of Buenos Aires. I've been working in the industry for about 30 years. I'm, I've been programming a while. And I regularly write about software on my blog, uh, about TDD, clean code, refactoring, and code smells. And what I feel home today at my university. Uh, this is the, qu the quick agenda we're going to talk on the next 25 minutes. Let's uh, quickly tell what a Wordle is for those who don't know what it is. Then we're going to make one of them programming with artificial intelligence. We will make another one version using TDD, my best tool. And we will compare several languages and draw conclusions uh, between the models. So, a Wordle. It's not a typo. What's a Wordle? If you are from Mars and don't know what is a Wordle, it's a very popular game that, to, to guess words, uh, it has had a boom this year in 2022, and it has a peak. Now, not, not everybody's playing Wordle, but in sometimes uh, it was said that one of five persons in the world was playing Wordle. It's an online crosswords game. Anyway, the Wordle is going to be our excuse uh, here to talk about software engineering seriously with a familiar metaphor. So when I'm talking about Wordle, I'm really talking about software engineering. So can we program a Wordle direct, directly with artif artificial intelligence? Well, the answer is, I, I was challenged to, to do this, and when the Wordle fever hit, everyone ran to do their own Wordles, and at the same time, many policy available tools emerged to generate code with artificial intelligence I like both of them. These tools were pretended with known games, among the, uh, other things. The, the P from the GPT-3 uh, means that it's pretrained, so the intelligence didn't know the world of rules. If it, they, you tell the intelligence to write a tic-tac-toe, for example, they know what a tic-tac-toe is, but luckily they don't know what a world is because they were trained before the world started, look, which was a very good experiment to start. Uh, I, I had some FOMO and I wanted to do my, my world and after trying to get some artificial intelligence to do it, I realized that there was a guy that did it uh, before me and said, oh, I'm too lazy, I will see how that, uh, he's doing the world with artificial intelligence instead, instead of doing it myself. So I find a, a guy on, 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 the, on the YouTube channel, a popular artificial intelligence channel called .csv uh, he made a step-by-step -step Wordle creation just dictating the, the instructions to, with natural language and the Wordle programs itself. I'm going to transcribe the version of the Wordle made of, on, on that channel. Uh, I strongly recommend to see the, the, the video because it's in Spanish and it has more detail that I will use in my talk. The original video is in Spanish and Codex, the tool he uses, uh, understands many different la natural languages. It's not related just to Spanish, English or, or so. To do, uh, they use codex that, as I said, it was a GPT-3. It's a transformational model open, uh, from a company named OpenAI that, that makes code from natural language. Sim similar to Copilot, I will talk a bit about Copilot and several others that we will mention later. Now I'm going to go through a series of screenshots uh, very quickly on how is the process of dictating the AI, the rules, and the AI generates codes to comply with the rules. I'm going to do it very, really fast because it's not the intent of this talk. Codes come with a sandbox and an idea. Sadly, the sandbox only supports JavaScript right now. Sorry, here is what .ccb uses to program, and the ID has a tool that we may use it later. I'm not going to spoil it, but it's just this tool, this tool with an input, and this is the codex ID. What you see on the right is a comment, is the instructions in natural language, and it's the only input that is on the box on, on red. The code below is generated by itself. Once you tell what you need, the code is generated. The result of the code generation is on the left, and we see something suspicious because we ask Codex to create a table because it, the, 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 the game uses a table, uh, and the, the, the UI understands, the, the, the AI understands that we need to make a visual table. So there's something that is not really good. We start dictating code, building the interface, we are adjusting it, and I follow the, the verbatim steps, or the, the right steps of the .ccv video, and make a visual table. What you see is immediate feedback at the uh, top right, and all the code that is generated is called by dictating. We dictate with what you see in the comments, in JavaScript comments, and it builds up and runs it like a very long script. 
So we're putting together the content with immediate feedback loop. If we dictate something that is not good, we go back and we dictate in another way until the AI understood what we need to do. And as we execute, we, we see the result. The live result uh, is the game in progress. That is very good because it has immediate feedback and it's all alive. We fix the styles. I, I'm just following the, the, the script. And we set up a play area where under the board where we are, we will enter the input and we will guess against the game to, to win what we need. And after these steps, there are just a, a few steps, we write the, the, the rules and we adjust the UI and, and the user interface and the styles and, and, the, and the size uh, um, until we need to have with the complex rules of the games. That takes just about three or four steps. I'm going to show it on the, on the following stuff, but are very concrete. Here ends the, the demo. There are more difficult rules that this game maybe does not comply that we will see uh, at the end of the talk. This version is live and is playable, and we can set this JavaScript code completely generated by the computer and put it and host it on, on, on a site, and we can play. This is just how to play without program. This is no, no code fantasy. The version 0.1 is already playable, even though it has several errors. So the last instruction, the last steps we need to dictate are more complex because they are related to the mechanics of the game uh, and are very difficult. But if you type this on, on the open eye, it generates the code in JavaScript that ensures the rules. So let's summarize what we have generated. Uh, most of the steps we have dictated with R27, but 22 of 27 are for defining the UI. There is no actual model. It's a great function with underlying data structures. And it's the current state of the art that artificial intelligence can do. There are no abstractions. There are no tests. It will not survive. It will be very difficult to survive to rule changes that there are a lot of worlds with different rules. And this is something that I would have loved to, uh, uh, to have when I learned to code. But I've been coding a lot. And now their tools are here. But it's a wonderful tool if you know what to do it, if you know why or when to use it. In fact, I am using them from some uh, of the things that I'm going to show you later. Sadly, it's not Willow. It's just plain JS. It writes JS. Aha. Uh -huh. Well, this is the end of the talk. And uh, I would like, to, I, I'm very glad I show you a lot of JavaScript in a small talk type. It will be the last time I, I show another language. Uh, so. I would like to make a proof of concept and say, what if we do the world with TDD? I like TDD. I use it for work and for teaching. And say, well, it, uh, this is a, a slide I uh, show in, in, uh, when I go to not friendly TDD people and need to change. I, I, want, I, just, I think we can skip it. But I, I decided to keep it because on the previous talk, uh, I realized that many people use TDD for brand new systems and ha are very afraid to use it on legacy system. And there are a lot of incredible and amazing techniques for using TDD. So if you need to use TDD, think that TDD is not just for new systems. You can use it in very large systems. I, I gave a talk in TDD conference last year talking about how to do test uh, driven development on existing and legacy system without database and copla and so. So that's why I kept this, this, um, this slide. So what I wanted to do is, hey, let's do TDD with artificial intelligence. And I tested uh, more, four of the more uh, used artificial intelligence generators. And I couldn't find a way. I Googled them. Nobody ever has done TDD with this uh, uh, code generators, with CodeX, with uh, Code Whisperer from Amazon, with GDA Copilot. You cannot do it. Or with uh, DeepBand AlphaCode. Uh, they are not ready, but they are not ready at November 22. I think they will be soon very ready, hopefully, and can help us with CDD. It's very difficult to build good models with these tools. You can write code, but you cannot write models. That's why they are called assistants and not coders. And this is very important. Many people think that they can write code. They, know, they do not write, and they don't intend to write code. They want to assist us. OK, so let's go back to TDD. I will not tell the mechanic of the TDD. I will make a, a very, very fast exercise on writing a word on TDD. We start with a broken test as requested by the technique. The first decision is to model our basic unit. 
A word would be a basic unit. A word is composed by five letters, but it's not a string, it's not a chart five, it's not a unicode chart, it's not a unicode string, it's a word. It represents the concept of a semantic word in our domain. Just as a, a hundred is not a hundred dollars or a date is not an integer. This is something that I have to explain on every talk. I hopefully, not, I hope I can, I don't need to do it on, on every, on, on, on to a small talker, but this is something that I have to emphasize every day I go, because all the words I, I have seen on the web use a string as a metaphor of a word of word. And this is called primitive obsession, and it's something that I write a lot in my blog. And it's a big problem in software design. Well, we don't need the instance creation method yet. We hard code the response and the layers. You know how TDD works. It's a very good practice to hard code it. I, encourage every one of you to hard code it because once you hard code in TDD, you have the following text to remove the hard coding and we implement it and we fake it and until we need to make it. That's how TDD works. The first step has already passed. The second should throw an exception because the number of letters is not a valid word. Again, a difference from using strings. In a string, it's valid to have as much characters as you want, as, as, as long as the memory is supported. And we declare a generic exception because creating particular exceptions is a code smells that pollutes our, nars, our namespace. So we had the test case for too long. We had the too short. We could do a refactor, but if we do a refactor, it would change the error message that distinguish between more or less. And we need to decide every time if we do or not a refactor. We are exploring and making decisions all the time. We are always learning. We do not work with a frozen application. Programming is learning, and refactoring is optional in TDD. We assume that an empty word is invalid for, because you cannot use an empty word. Of course, an empty string is valid, but we have already decided not to use a string. And this is a very strong argument for not using strings. The test passes because we already have a control that less than five letters is invalid, and having zero is a particular case. So we can delete it, or we can keep the test. And this is something that divides the, the, the words. Half of the people say that if the test passes, have to delete it. The other uh, half leave them just for safety. We put a non alphabetical character, and it should fail. An asterisk should not belong to a word or word. It's not valid. Again, this is a, uh, another difference between a string and a word, an abstraction, that does not hold invalid characters. Many talks at this conference talks about strings. I would like to talk about objects, OK? So be wary of wordles that use strings because they can catch these kind of mistakes, that having things that a string cannot have. We could put another different character and have got another case, it, but it would be repeated code, the same check by asterisk than for a point. So it's similar to the length. We can decide to refactor. We can refactor if we are not cha making functional changes. And we are not going to make a case for all characters. We choose representatives and put a formula. A formula that in a small talk is just its letter. Believe me that in, in different other languages, you have regex, you have a world nightmare. This is just simpler. Remember that the, we cannot refactor at the same time as writing the test. And the expression checks characters regardless of case because we don't have evidence yet. And TD is all about having evidence. We put forward design decision as late as possible. In addition, we already see that this expression might not work with characters in Nordic language or Spanish, the ñ. Hopefully, our small talk supports Unicode. Patience, we need to build by the evidence. We don't, we don't need to go ahead. We will have to compare. Equality is always subjective and depends on the language. We need to compare to see if we have won the, way, the game. We have guessed the right word, and that needs comparing two words. The important thing is to know that if we have two words with the same characters, is the same word, and we will need it to know if we are right. Sometimes more code is better. I made this kata in many uh, different languages. When you need to, f to deal with a structural comparison in small talk, you put the equal, you put the hash, and you're good to go. We need, and there are no cases, no, no something wrong. We need to make a decision about capitalization. We put forward that decision, but we need to make it. We arbitrarily decide that our domain is going to be lowercase. We normalize it. The decision does not affect the user interface that could capitalize this text. Again, this is obvious for us small talkers, but in many talks I say, they say, no, but the UI shows the uppercase. No, well, we know the model is there, and the UI is there, and transformations can occur between the two words. We change the test to catch, to catch uppercase taste. And this become an unbreakable invariant. From now on, we cannot put a lower a uppercase characters. One more reason not to use strings, and I won't, will not bore you with this anymore. 
We begin to explore when the word is valid and when it's not. There are five layer words that are not valid because they don't belong, they, they are not valid on, on, on the domain, they are not valid in some languages. We are not entirely sure that this is a responsibility of the word, of a, a word to know if a word is valid or not. Since programming is understanding behavior and not data, we decide it would not be correct to continue with the path and leave this responsibility to some other object we will see later. So, we start playing. We have the word, now we, start, we have the game. Let's start defining when we win. If the game starts, we don't win. Obviously, this is a case that we always forget to test. And if we follow some methodology like zombies, which I do when I do TDD, you always start with the zero case and, to for, and force us to start thinking about the case in which do win because we will see later. We hard coded to have another case to remove the hard code. So we started trying to win. We have to save the words, try it, to, to know if we win, generate statistics, the graphic you see on Twitter on how uh, we have been on, on playing the game. We have to remember the words already played. We remember, we, save it, we save it on an instance variable. We have a status, in a state we neither lost nor won, but we are leaving the conditions written. You can not uh, you can neither lose or nor, nor win at the same time in some intermediate states when the game is not over. This leads us to think about, about what foundation, fun, functional conditions take us out of these states so we generate the set data to uh, uh, remove the hard coding. Look where the assertions are made just before the behavior changes, the pattern is always the same. Fake it till we need to make it. We need to know which words are valid. We give a list to the game. No databases, no DAOs, no premature optimization, no singletons, no word managers, no word helpers. When I talk to people that not want to start to make a mess and, and optimize, don't optimize, please. Let, let's have a good model. This is so natural in small talk, but it's hard to teach to other communities. No one tell us more than a list, a simple collection of words right in the head. And if we need to optimize it, it there will be time for it when we have written the test. This breaks the previous test where we created games, but we did not pass anything. The invariant, we have to go back to the previous test that made us set up that now we think it's invalid because every game needs to have the, core, the, the, the valid words. In addition to passing the words to him, we have to tell him which is the winning word, and this might be in the setup. We don't want mutable games. Again, this forces us to change back to the creation setup of previous tests, and that may, might be the nightmare of this year to go back and, re and change a, a, a lot of setups on the, test, on the previous test. Obviously, the winning word has to be in the list of allower words. This is a rule. This invariant checks improves our model, another invariant that forces us to modify the previous test. We need to go back, and this is a good symptom. We're improving what we have learned about having valid instances, and we're going and not going to mock them. Now we can determine when we won and when we lost the position of the assertion before and after losing. Note that these are not unit test cases, they are functional use states. And let's do the hardest, and I will go faster, even faster. The right position indicates on, which is the easier of the two, the correct and the incorrect matches, and the layers are displaying in a different color. As always, we started without, uh, con without matches. Zombie case zero, follow zombie, the C is zero. A simple matching algorithm, iterating, we search it if it matches or not. And as usual, the first solution might not be performant, but we don't care in TDD if the performance, we need to learn and write the test. When we have a good base of tests and evidence, we could make optimization that will not be premature. Incorrect positions are going to bring us slightly a lot of headaches that I will talk now. And one uh, subtlety is that the, the, if the wrong, um, the wrong positions have to take account the right position and to remove them. Let's gradually learn and leave evidence. Then we could make non-permature optimizations. Okay, this is the incorrect positions. This is an algorithm, it's a simple algorithm, and we can ship it to production. We ship it the case, and after adding some tests and being confident, I published this on my blog and felt happy. But someone never completes. There are always things to add and something that I think to correct. Reading a note, I understood that the rules of economic position are more subtle. No, they are not as easy as I thought. Everyone is doing the, the world's wrong. And I realized when I started doing a parallel again each world day, there's a new game every day, that I, it didn't work really well. So it's a process and it's TDD and we're learning and it's very good. 
TDD is designed to learn. The good thing about the node is that we already have the cases that are going to be wrong and the expected behavior. And we have cases, programming is very easy. When I talk about Wordle, I'm not talking about Wordle. I'm talking about serious and great software that we have to maintain. So uh, we have a solution. Uh, we write a solution. The mysterious tool that I brought you at the starting that comes with the IDE help us to code and translate already tested code because the blog had some solution uh, luckily in JavaScript, but I'm working on, on a small talk. So I'm not too afraid, I'm too afraid to make a live demo, but if you go to Codex and put the code, it translates with minor changes into small talk. The uglies are not the same, there are some manipulations on a string that are not very good, but we have running code. And we, when we have running code, we can write the test and we can do refactor. So there's not a problem. And we can translate a small talk code to other languages, and that's what I did. I wrote this kata in many, many languages which I don't know. The mysterious tools, the, the, the translator, help us to code and, answer, and also to translate already tested code. And I, I've written about 200 software articles in many different languages, programming languages, about 30 programming, and I don't, I can not program, any, not even in small talk. So, uh, I, couple, I just know a couple of them, and I write mass, mostly my code in a small talk, and then say, oh, I want to write Kotlin. And I wrote a code smell in Kotlin, and people say, oh, you know Kotlin? No, I don't know Kotlin, I know it's just a small talk. And this brings me to mind when Maximo saw the, uh, the other day, every programmer, every small talk programmer thinks in a small talk. And I can program in, in any language because I have the ideas in a small talk. Uh, I published this kata, as I said, in many different languages, and there's no more stack overflow. Now, when I need a function in some language, I write in a small talk and translate it, and it does the magic. Uh, well, the test passes all the time. I was adding to the suite to a parallel with the games day by day to verify that it behaves correctly, and up to today, it's working. And after a couple of iterations and having the failure exceptions, we can write an algorithm. The most difficult thing uh, when making complex software is writing the test cases. The algorithms emerge on their own. When we have the hard coding and we remove the hard code, the algorithms always emerge. What did we learn by doing the world of TDD? Well, we generate a small model based on reality and compact. 20, uh, 25 steps generated two classes and the model meets good heuristic because it was an invariant to have Full object, immutable, no setters, no getters, not null. And we have 100,000 covers. I will test it with Nico's tool. But we have it by design because we are doing TDD, and TDD avoids code plating and need, and just write code, you need to cover the test, the, the broken test. And we don't have a speculative code. We have just the code we need according to the specification of the test we have written. And why are we? interested in doing with TDD and not with the artificial intelligence. Well, the model with the strings that I showed you before, or charts of five, work is great. But my thesis is that the best models survive, survive better changes, and changes and learning are inevitable in our profession. So we can keep evolving good models, and we cannot keep evolving, and I know because I've been there, with very bad models. So. Uh, the motto will be, I, I have a quote by Bertrand Meyer that says, objects are there for the picking. Um, my meta motto will be, tools are there for the picking. And as a conclusion, we are no longer humans. We are no longer machines. We are technological centaurs. Artificial intelligence is already there, and we can and we have to use it. For example, generated the UI intelligently and mounting in this model saves me from making uh, a simple UI. I'm not a front-end programmer. I wouldn't have made the, the UI I showed you before, but I can now do it, programming. And the model, I will make it in small talk because it's a center. It's a combination of the good and the, of both words. And I also generated this image and all my articles images with Ali, and I'm not an illustrator. And uh, we are in the fourth industrial revolution. revolution. Let's not be the same engine. Remember that this talk is not about Wordle, but about software development. And as a matter of conclusion, I gave this talk in a broader audience, and I had to explain a lot of things that seem obvious in a small talk. So 
we are closer to, to, to make good models. Let's go for them. Well, hope you like my talk and there's time for questions. I will glad I don't know my time. Oh. So I know I <laughs> Yes, if, if you can. <laughs> Sorry. In GitHub, yeah. Uh, the YouTube video with the JavaScript does not have the code, but I transcribed it and it's on my GitHub. I didn't put it, but I can bring you it. It's github.mcscse. Uh, I don't know. Uh, open eye. Well, this is the last later repository. You have both the codes. You have, uh, you have sorry. The code for the working demo generated by the UI, the Smalltalk code, the JavaScript code, the PHP code, and I don't and the articles. Yes, you have it all there. Okay, thanks. Any other questions? Yeah, okay. Thank you. Thank you.